Welcome to another unit in this SQL course. This time I'm going to talk about how with our queries we can also filter what we get. Well, that's relatively easy done in a standard version. For this I'm going to start with a normal query. Here I'm working with my product, so I want to get the product code. So I'm going select the product code from, well, my table at this case is called products, so from products, and I shorten this to P. This, however, will give me all of the product codes I have. So if I just run this, I see here I get all of the product codes. What, however, if I only want the product codes for those products who weigh less than 1000 gram? So I only want those three and this one here. Well, in this case, I have to add a condition. Conditions with SQL, I'm always introducing via where. So where a certain condition is met. Well, the condition in this case is weight should be smaller than 1000. And I can actually write it like this. P weight smaller than than 1000. That's everything I have to do because if I now take a look at the data, see here, I have only four product codes. And that's exactly the product codes for these four products which all weigh less than 400, uh, 1000. Well, I could do this with other queries as well. I could go with smaller or equal. I could go with greater or equal with greater, I could go with is equal to. The only thing which is not as intuitive is I want to have everything but those products which weigh exactly 2,900. I do not have an unequal sign at the ready, so here I'm going with smaller, greater, and well, I have to change this to 2,900. If I now run this, see here, I get everything but the very first one, the R001G. That's not part of this part here. So that's the most common ones I'm going to use. But if I take a closer look at my product table, I also see I have a problem here. The wire cables does not have weight or costs entered. Well, I could build a data table that he automatically checks whether there's always an entry. At this point, however, something must have gone wrong. So I'm missing information. And it might be interesting that I'm shown all those data sets where some of the information is missing. So if I want to know which of those products does not report any weight, I could simply go with where weight and then I add is null. Is null means there is no information present. So if I execute this, I see there's only one product here, K019F. Well, K019F, that's the wire cables. That's where it's missing. So that's a way to ascertain I know where something is not entered, where information is missing. However, what I also see in my table, the wire cables are not only missing the weight, they're also missing the costs. So I could go and say, well, display everything where either the costs or the weight are missing. And this I can add if I combine two of those conditions. I have two main ways of combining them. One is the or part, the or condition. This means where either weight does not exist or then we get costs is null. So where either weight does not exist or costs does not exist. Well, costs does not exist. They both do not exist. That's the third alternative or both do not exist. So the or goes either one of 
those conditions is fulfilled or both of them. Well, let's save this and take a look here. So, well, we get the same one, but that's not really surprising since this is the only thing where something is missing. So let's make this a bit interesting. I'm just erasing the part here for the reductors. I just have to go back here and have to run this again. Okay, at this point, yeah. And I have to close this table first. So if I run it again, I see here, that's the two codes, that's the two products where I've been missing some of my information. So in the first case, it's missing only the costs. So one of the conditions is fulfilled with the wire cables. In the second case, it's missing both information. So both cases are fulfilled. However, I could also look for those cases, those entries where both conditions are fulfilled and only those where both conditions are fulfilled. If I'm interested in both or more than one condition should be fulfilled, I can combine them with and. And means condition one and condition two have to be fulfilled. So if I run this, I see here I only get the wire cables because only the wire cables are actually missing both entries. So that's almost everything I wanted to do. I want to do one small extra part because at this point we worked with numbers and we worked with missing information. However, what if we work with text? Let's take a look at the employees table here. And here I have a column called department. So it might be interesting to find out who are the guys who are working in sales. So if I go here and switch the table, if I go to E for employees, I'm getting, well, maybe just say I'm getting the last name of all of them from the table employees. Then we have where, well, where in the employees table, the department should be sales. If I look for text, I always have to put the text in these quotation marks, the single quotation marks. So here I'm putting sales into single quotation marks and close this with a semicolon. Before I execute this one aspect, I do not have to display what this condition is actually based on. So I can make a condition on the department and display the names. This doesn't matter in any which way. Well, let's see how this works out. Well, I get five people here. That's exactly those five people working in sales. Well, this then is really the final comment I wanted to make here. So we can look for text, we can look for numbers, we can check for missing data. And that's the three main important cases. Of course, other parts are also possible, like check for dates, select everything before a certain date, after a certain date. But this is more or less similar to what we do with numbers. So nothing new there. Thereby, I want to conclude this session. I hope you enjoyed it and I say goodbye and see you next time.